Praise God. And welcome to Fresh Manor Ministries of Miracles. At this time, I ask that you pay attention to the sounding of the Hebrew horn. Father, we thank you for another opportunity where we could come together, glorify your name by way of giving out your word. Oh, Heavenly Father, let the prayers go up. Mm, let the study be a study where we could use it against the evil one. We pray today that someone who's been thinking about coming into Jesus will stop the thinking and come on in because the timing is right, right now. In Jesus' name, we come before you, not in defeat but in victory. Hallelujah. Let this be a message today that we all could appreciate. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Glory to God, glory to God. Fire showed up in my bones. The Holy Ghost fire showed up in my bones. The Holy Ghost fire showed up in my bones. The Holy Ghost fire is shut up in my bones. It's like fire. Shut up in my bones. The Holy Ghost fire is shut up in my bones. The Holy Ghost fire shut up in my bones. The Holy Ghost fire is shut up in my bones. In my bones. The Holy Ghost fire in my heart. The Holy Ghost in my mind, the Holy Ghost fire every day, the Holy Ghost fire every time, the Holy Ghost fire my friends come against me, the Holy Ghost fire I depend on Jesus, the Holy Ghost fire to bring me up, the Holy Ghost fire and pull me out, oh, cause it's like fire, shut up in my bones, the Holy Ghost fire is shut up in my bones, the Holy Ghost fire shut up in my bones. The Holy Ghost fire is shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's like fire. Jeremiah was told, oh, by the governor, by the kings, by all these royalties, that if you be quiet about your God, we will take you out of this pit and let you roam free without being hassled, but you got to be quiet about God. Oh yes, <laughs> Jeremiah didn't lie to him for one second. He told him, hmm, it is like fire. Shut up in my bones. I can't keep it in. I got to tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. Huh, he didn't know about Jesus, but he knew about God and he could not keep it in. He had to tell them what God said, what the prophecy was. They didn't listen, and we know what happened 70 some years in Babylonian. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, we have got to be like that because we know about Jesus. We know about the one who died on the cross and said, Father, forgive them. And it should be like fire. Shut up in the bones. I can't be quiet about Jesus. I can't be quiet about being holy. I'm going to let it shine regardless of what they say because they can't put me in heaven. They could try to give me hell, but it won't work. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I got that love of Jesus shut up in my bones. And I pray that you have that love of Jesus as well. If you will, go ahead and turn. We got two key verses. The first, Genesis 3, verse 12. Chapter 3, verse 12. Please put something there, a paper, whatever, to hold that spot. The second will be Romans 3, it's chapter 3, and verse 4. Those are our key, two key verses for today. This is Fresh Manor Ministries of Miracles. I'm the elder, Lee Anthony Smith. My wife is the pastor, the prophetess, Michelle Ruth Smith. Our apostle is no one else but the Medina Ashley. 
Oh, yes, we thank her in her absence today. Actually, we're going to visit her for a couple of days in Texas, where she has a church coming up there. Glory to God. So we're going on there and um, say hello to everybody. And whatever she needs us to do while we're there, we are willing to do it. If you be number, sit there in the amen section and throw up some amens. That's fine with me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We give honor to God. He's the head. He's the creator. He sent the son Jesus to die so that we could have life in abundance. In return, Jesus left us with the comforter. We know as the Holy Spirit, our GPS right here on planet Earth. Our guide. Oh, tell us what is wrong. You know sometimes you shouldn't be doing this because there's something inside called the Holy Spirit that is guiding you. And I pray that you have that as well because when you got saved, you have a right to petition for the Holy Spirit and Jesus will send the Holy Spirit upon you. Some people say, well, you didn't shout. <laughs> you didn't speak in tongues. Oh, you didn't jump up and down from the chanting lives. Oh, you didn't run across the... <laughs> Those are definitely evidence of the Holy Spirit coming in you. It's not necessary that you do it at that time. Sometimes, I remember the first time I started speaking in tongues, I was coming from work. And I started thinking about the goodness of Jesus. And before I realized what was happening, I was home and I was still speaking in tongues. And I don't know what, but Jesus brought me home. Hallelujah. One day he's going to bring me to that permanent home in heaven. And that's what it's all about. Getting to heaven. That let no one. Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek that first. So if anybody said, Well, all you talk about is getting into heaven. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's all about getting into heaven first. Paul says, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It's about getting into heaven first. Glory to God. Glory to God. I pray that you are at our two key verses. The first, Genesis 3, verse 12. And it reads, And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me. Now, that one little section in there, I put parentheses around it because it's going to be the gist. It's going to be the main focus of what we are talking about today. And he goes on to say, She gave me of the tree. And I did eat. This is the sin that was committed in the Garden of Eden. As far as I know, it is the first. But there's some that came along right after it. And this is one of them. We'll talk about that. Romans 3 and 4 says this. God forbid, yea, let God be true. Hallelujah. But every man a liar. If there's going to be right, wrong, if there's going to be truth and a lie, God is going to have to be the truth. Everyone else is going to have to be a liar. Keep that thought as we get into our title. But every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy saying, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. We will get into that. Title, my Lord is always justified. My Lord. We know when I say Lord, I'm not leaving out Jesus. I'm not leaving out God. I'm not, leave, not even leaving out the Holy Spirit because there are three in one. Talk about one, you're talking about the other two as well because they all work together. Hallelujah. My Lord is always justified. Let us pray and we will get into this word. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that this be a word that when it comes out, it just won't be mumbling. It just won't be another say so. It will be meaningful because now we can fight the devil with the word of God. We can't fight him with our fists. We can't fight him with our weapons that we have here on earth. But this word will put him in his place. I pray it be clear, concise, and on time. And the amens mean I got this. In Jesus' name, we come before you for a blessed message. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. My Lord is 
always. That word always has a lot of might to it because we got some time here. We got every now and then. We got most of the time, which is not too bad, but not good enough because my Lord is always justified. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and bring, let's pick that up. My Lord, as I said earlier, God, Jesus, not take away one from the other. Glory to God. Justified. Okay, I went to Google for a little help. Correct choice. Best course of actions. For your good is for you. Is what's best.